What is going on my friends? Welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, we are not back home, back in rainy Spokane, Washington right now. We are in Hawaii, but the next two videos that go up on the channel are two videos that I filmed previously to coming out here. So I hope you guys enjoy those two. And then after that, I'm gonna have at least, at least one Hawaii vlog. Also, before we jump into today's video, Avalon King is having a major, major Memorial Day sale. So how it works is one kit is still regular price. If you buy two kits, you get a bunch of money off one free prep shampoo and one free maintenance shampoo. And then the more kits you buy, the cheaper each kit is. So say if you buy five kits, it's a ton of money off. Regular would be $385 and for the Memorial Day sale, it'd be $250. I'll have Avalon King linked down in the description box below. No discount code needed. Just hit the link down below and go get yourself some ceramic code. guys welcome back to the channel this car is really loud i can't wait to put my downpipe back on so i can actually hear myself talk and think i think we can all agree it's a little aggressive especially like bouncing off the ground it's kind of like the the duramax as soon as we put that axle dump on there it made the truck so much louder just because the exhaust is like dumping off the ground and that's what's going on with the evo right now we don't have the downpipe on just that elbow downpipe is chilling back there still waiting on that guy to cure so we can get her back on but yeah this thing is freaking dummy loud today should be a pretty interesting day i'm excited i've had some parts laying around for a little bit um let me grab them real quick because i've had them for like six months probably and i don't know why i haven't put them on yet Fairly interesting packaging, not gonna lie. A wood crate. They are carbon fiber pieces, so I'm sure that that's why they wanted them to be well protected. We have these pieces here, which are gonna look cool. And then we picked up a new boost gauge as well. And if you remember back a few weeks ago, we were trying to put a boost gauge where the factory clock is, which is right there. I know I still need a radio for this thing. She needs a lot of little things. So we picked up this boost gauge and I think this guy is going to do the trick. This was like 40 or 50 bucks. So I hope we can get this one to work. The last one I cut apart was like 20. So if we can't get this thing to work, I'll probably just give up on the project. This is the sender for the boost gauge. But I think first off, I wanna go ahead and open these up and get them on the car because these are going to completely change the front end of this thing. I really, really do enjoy canards on vehicles, especially like, for example, look at the Evo 10 with those canards on it. It's so aggressive. That one does have two per side on the Vars bumper. The canards I bought, it's only one per side, but I th still think it's gonna look really good. The reason I always take so long to install stuff like this is because I'm always like back and forth on whether or not I wanna start drilling into the bumper. Cause as soon as you put these things on, you can't really take them back off because there's going to be holes in the bumper. That's the unfortunate thing about stuff like this. These guys do sit pretty low, pretty much butts up right to the bottom or right to the top of the lip. So she's going to sit like that, but I think that looks sick. I really, really like it. So that's the first thing we're going to do today is get these canards on. I hope we like them because if we don't like them, there's really no going back. I think I like them. I'm going to go ahead, get them installed on the car, hopefully even left to right. And then we can step back, take a look, and see how good they look. When I was first mocking these up, I was kind of iffy on them, whether I wanted to run them or not. But now that they're on the car, I think I really like them. They look sick. It's nothing crazy. It's not like they stick out a ton or they're super aggressive like the 
Varus ones or the Varus front on the 10. It's just like a nice subtle carbon fiber canard. It's just, it's sick. Flows nicely with the front lip. Overall, I think that's a win. I really enjoy them. I'm obviously now we kind of have to run them, but I think that is the right choice. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I do feel like the front end is much more aggressive than like the sides or the rear of the car now, but we do still have the side skirts that we've had previously for this car. We still have those. And then we have the Voltex diffuser that we pulled off the black eight that we could put on this car. And I think that would just kind of even everything out and make it all flow nice and the whole car be fairly aggressive. So I like it. If you guys want these canards, I'll link them down below. Let's go ahead and move on to this boost gauge. I really hope we can get this thing to fit. I'll know right off the bat, as soon as we start pulling it apart, if it's gonna work or not. I'm gonna completely disassemble this thing. All we need from this is the wiring and the circuit board itself. I think this is gonna work fine. Oh yeah, this is gonna 100% work. That was super easy. So all we have to do, the reason I know this is gonna work is because the whole circuit board is right here. On that last gauge, it was on the actual face of the gauge that we were trying to cut. And obviously when you cut through a circuit board, it doesn't really like that and it doesn't power up afterwards. So we are gonna have to trim this thing a little bit, but I have high hopes and I have faith that it's gonna do the trick. Let's get the clock pulled out of this thing again. Do some trimming, do some modding get that thing wired up, and we're gonna have a sick, beautiful, subtle boost gauge. Two minutes later, we have the clock out. Let's get this thing installed. So, let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and power this thing on real quick. I don't know which way is top or bottom. I would assume that is top, but putting this thing in, getting it all installed, and then realizing you put it in backwards would probably be the worst thing in the world. Okay, so these little, I don't look like resistors are on the top. So this guy is gonna sit in here. This is gonna be super easy to fit. All right, I'm gonna do a little trimming up top, cut a little slot in the bottom because there's a little slot on there that'll kind of hold it in place. And we can get this guy installed. I am freaking excited, guys. All right, we got her to fit in like five seconds. It's like it was meant to be pretty much. Now I just need to figure out how to secure this whole gauge. Like it's tight already, it'd probably honestly stay. But I think I'm gonna throw like a little bit of epoxy or JV weld on the back side of this thing just to make sure she never comes out. You know what, before I go ahead and epoxy it, let's get everything wired up and make sure it actually works and actually reads the boost before we spend all that time. So let's see what we gotta do here. Wiring is pretty straightforward. Reds, ignition 12 volt, a switch 12 volt. Blacks are gonna go to a ground. And then the, it says blue wire connect to sensor white wire, but it's actually green. So green is gonna go to white. All right, we got everything wired up. It's chilling at negative 0 0.1. It'd be cool if it was zero, but let's, uh, let's fire it up and see if she actually reads the boost. I don't know if this thing doesn't read vacuum. It shows it's a, it actually shows it's a boots slash vacuum gauge. Obviously they meant to say boost there, but um, yeah, with the car running, it's going to like 0.4 pounds of vacuum. Is this even like PSI? 
Maybe this is like, I wonder if this is, no, it has to be PSI. I know it's PSI. I wouldn't have bought anything else. But what we're gonna do is just completely put this thing back together with the gauge in, go drive the car and see if it works. Because as of right now, I don't think it's working. All right, we did a quick wiring job. Let's go rip it. And if it starts showing positive boost, we'll be all right. Looks like it's a reading in bars, not PSI, which I could be wrong. I just went on the eBay listing and it, it is indeed a bar boost gauge. So it reads in bars. So one bar equals, I think it's like 14 and a half or 15 PSI. I wish it was PSI based and I'm gonna look for one that's PSI based, but at least we know it works. And yeah, if you know of like, I think they call this like a shift light style boost gauge. If you know of one of these guys, that reads in PSI, drop a link in the comment section below. It's cool, it works and it's sick. It's a really, really dope location. So I'm gonna get everything completely wired up. I'm gonna run it. Even if we can't find a PSI gauge to put there, the bar will work fine. It's just, I'm not used to reading bars, but I guess it is. It's a little extra JDM. Let's get it all buttoned up. We gotta run that boost line or the boost source and then we can go rip the car. Because as of right now, this car is tuned on 32 pounds. So it should be a touch over two bar. The boost gauge line is now ran. We teed into the fuel pressure regulator, came out where the ABS line is, runs through a rubber grommet underneath the dash to the boost gauge sender. I'm gonna see if we even need epoxy because it's such a tight fit in there. I don't know if we need epoxy. I think it's gonna stay. In all honesty, that's such a tight fit. I'm not gonna epoxy it just in case we find one that's PSI instead of bar. We can get it swapped out without trying to break away the JB Weld. All right, the last and final step was trying to figure out what to do with those holes for the buttons. And I decided just to lop apart the factory clock. As you guys can see, it's all cut apart, but at least now we have the factory buttons in there and it looks OEM. It literally looks like there's no boost gauge in there. There's no nothing, no janky winky cut apart clock. I think that is sick. Buttons still feel factory. Like they push in like a stock one would. That was well worth it. It was like an extra 10, 15 minutes. Game changer, game changer for sure. One last confirmation that she's working. Beautiful. Look how bright it is too. Ah, oh, I wish I was PSI, whatever. Definitely one of the coolest mods I've done. Can't even tell it's there. And how he fired up, then you can tell it's there. And it's super bright too, I love that. guys that's gonna be a wrap for today let me know what you think down in the comment section below of the carbon fiber canards which will be linked down below and our boost gauge that you can't see which will also be linked down below i hope you guys enjoyed peace out i'll see you tomorrow